Welcome to the Hearing Marketing Profits Podcast, the show that reveals how to take your hearing practice to the next level. Hear from professionals in the industry as they share their stories of success and inspire you. You'll also discover how to attract more customers with effective digital marketing strategies. Here is your host, Shane Gebhardt. Welcome, everybody, to the uh, 2023 Internet Marketing Plan for Hearing Practices webinar, uh, How to Maximize Your Appointments in the New Year. Uh, glad you're here with us live. Um, just want to let you know we are uh, recording this, uh, so there will be a replay available. Um, that way, if you have any questions, you can always resort back uh, to that and uh, and check anything you need to in case you missed it uh, or weren't able to get it written down or, or a screenshot. So uh, we do record all of these. Um, this is a, a monthly webinar you know, series that we put on. We try to do one, one a month uh, all on, on various different topics. Uh, and with this year, uh, with the end of the year being here, you know, we're obviously at the end of December, getting ready to head into 2023. Uh, this is always the time of year that we do um, our 2023 internet marketing uh, plan for the upcoming year. So we'll run this webinar uh, here in December and then again in January, um, just in case anybody missed it uh, this first time around. So the goal of today is to help you uh, get your, get your um, plan laid out, obviously going into the new year. So um, Really excited to help you do that. Glad you're on here with us live. Uh, so let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, so what we're gonna cover um, is uh, basically exactly like I just mentioned, setting goals for 2023, um, how many leads we need to hit our targets. Uh, we're gonna look at the three fundamentals of marketing success. Uh, we're gonna take a look at how to optimize your website for conversion in 2023 and beyond. Um, we're going to take a look at the big picture of all the online marketing channels you should be tapping into to maximize your lead flow. Uh, there is obviously a lot that goes into uh, internet marketing these days. There's so many different platforms you have to keep a pulse on. So uh, for a lot, you know, a lot of people, it can be overwhelming. Um, and then we're going to take a look at, look at the uh, latest trends that you need to focus on for 2023. And then uh, we're going to develop a custom plan uh, based on where you are now and what you need to do to uh, really take things to the next level. Uh, for the new year. So hopefully that sounds like a good plan to everybody. So uh, let's keep pressing forward and, and get started. Um, so if you're here live, obviously uh, we're excited to have you here, but uh, if you're watching this live or even if you're watching the replay, you know, um, basically you've set aside the time to be here and we appreciate that. Um, so, you know, pause your cell phones or close your browsers, um, you know, turn off Facebook, the notifications, you know, limit those. Uh, you know, if you're a hearing practice owner or a marketing manager you know, and you're serious about getting better results in, in the upcoming year in 2023, then uh, the next 60 minutes is really going to help change your business uh, for the better. It's going to help you take things to the next level. So um, be present, be engaged. You know, I, I like to run these as, as interactive and as, as engaging as possible. So if you have questions, feel free to put them in the chat um, and, and I'll absolutely address them uh, as we go, or we can circle back at the end and uh, address them then. So uh, if you have a question about something, uh, don't be afraid to to speak up and and ask for some clarification or or a little bit more of a deep dive into something. So, um, so if you stay to the end, uh, basically we'll we'll make sure you get a couple goodies. Um, we have the uh, ultimate internet marketing checklist for audiologists and hearing practices, um, and then uh, basically we've got a few other goodies for you as well. So uh, I'll share with you how to get those uh, once we get to the end of the webinar as well. All right. So um, some of you may know who I am. You may have been on our email list for a while and have attended multiple you know, webinars, or, or maybe we've met at a conference or something like that. But some of you may not know who I am. So you may be wondering, who is this guy and, and why should you listen to him? So uh, my name is Shane Gepharts. I'm the CEO and founder of Audiology Ignite. Uh, we are a hearing, uh, and hearing practice and audiology specializing digital marketing practice. So that is our main focus. That's what we focus on uh, every day, day in and day out, all, all year round. Um, so we have uh, clients all across the, the country that we work with, um, as far as hearing practices, everything from single locations all the way up to about 50 locations, uh, you name it, we, we pretty much have it. So um, I've, I've authored a book, uh, which is called The Complete Guide to Internet Marketing for Audiologists and Hearing Practices. Um, you can actually get it on our website for free if you want the digital version, or um, if you like a, a hard copy, uh, you can get it off Amazon um, as well. So we're members of IHS and ADA, uh, and actually I need to add AAA as well. Um, and uh, I've got over a decade of marketing, digital marketing experience. Uh, I've been doing this for, for quite a while. And, and like I mentioned, we work with audiologists and hearing practices all across the country. So this is, this is what we do. Um, so 
basically just kind of give you a little background on on why we put these webinars together and uh, what the whole point is. You know, really, we want to share uh, the the expertise and and share the you know the the insights of what we see day in and day out, what's working, and, and try to share that knowledge with you so that you guys can can help you know take your practices to the next level and really benefit from uh, from internet marketing. So. As we dive in here, um, I always like to ask a question, you know, just uh, write this down on your notes, but what's the hardest part about marketing your hearing practice online? Um, you know, it could be getting uh, getting leads. It could be uh, converting the leads. It could be, um, you know, usually those are the two most common. Uh, that's why I kind of start with those. Um, it could be getting, getting exposure or just even purely navigating the online landscape as a whole. You know, maybe there's just too many different platforms to worry about. It's overwhelming and you just don't even want to want to mess with it. So you, you just kind of try to keep a distance from it. Um, maybe you rely on, you know, direct mail or uh, local print, you know, magazines, newspapers, or TV, you know, um, but everyone has something that that they consider, you know, the hardest part about marketing your, your practice online. So I'm always curious to kind of hear those things. If you want, share them in the chat. Um, that, that's always appreciated, but just make that, you know, make that a note down in your notes as far as what, what really is the sticking point. And, and there's a reason we're doing this and we'll, we'll come back to it. But um, I also want to make sure we download the workbook um, as well. So uh, if you head over to that link you see there, audiologyignite.com slash workbook, uh, you can get the workbook uh, downloaded. It's just a PDF. Um, and then uh, that way you can have that uh, kind of work through it as we go through this uh, to take your notes as well. Um, so just want to make sure you guys have that as well. All right. So why are we here? Um, you know, obviously if you're here, you're worried about, you're not worried, but you're, you know, wanting to make sure that you have a solid plan going into 2023, right? You know, there's a big opportunity when it comes to growing your business online through the different portals and different channels that exist, uh, and trying to reach the audience that, that you're, uh, you're going after. So essentially that's why we're here, right? We know that, you know, there's so many options and maybe you have your budget and you're like, okay, look, I get it. I know I need to be doing it. Uh, I just don't know where to go. I don't know where to start. I don't know what I should be focusing on. You know, should I be doing SEO? Should I be running ads? You know, if I'm running ads, which platform should it be on? You know, Google, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, you know, YouTube, uh, Twitter. I mean, you, the list goes on and on. So, um, you know, that's that's one thing we're going to clarify today is is where to focus and uh, and how to get clear on what you need to uh, to put your focus on. Um, again, you know, SEO, pay-per-click, your website, social media, again, the, the, the platforms go on and on. So it's like, okay, where do we, where do we put our focus? That's, that's what we need to clarify. Um, you know, we're also here because this is a major investment. You know, a lot of people make uh, a, a sizable investment or a good portion of their revenue goes into their marketing. And so it's, it's important, right? It's, it's essentially the lifeblood of the business, you know, to keep bringing in new patients and keep, keep, uh, keep that business flowing in. So, so that's another reason why we're, we're unpacking this for you. And then, you know, you may be here because uh, you've done marketing. You've, you know, we hear it all the time. I, I have these conversations weekly where people are like, ah, no, we tried Facebook ads and we didn't get anything from it. Or no, we tried SEO and it just took forever and we never got anything out of it. So uh, maybe you've done a lot of this stuff and just maybe it didn't pan out the way you thought it would, or maybe the results were not quite what you expected them to be. So you don't have much to show for it. So you're looking for that, you know, that, that better understanding of, okay, what should I be focusing on with my 2023 plan? So um, overall, a fail, you know, is if we don't have a clear plan, uh, we can overspend or worse, underspend and underperform, right? We, we see this pretty, pretty common uh, occurrence as well, because, you know, people will say, oh yeah, we're doing everything we're supposed to be. Well, they just don't even realize that they're actually underspending and vastly underperforming uh, for their market. So that's what we consider a fail, is we don't want that to occur. So what's the opportunity? Well, the opportunity is pretty clear, but uh, the opportunity today is we want to walk away with a clear plan with goals, targets, and KPIs laid out so that we know, okay, this is exactly what we're going to focus on. Uh, we're going to start at the end and kind of work backwards. What's our goal? How are we going to get there? How many leads does that take? What's the average sale? You know, that kind of, kind of exercise we're going to walk through. Um, some people have done this. They do it every year. Um, some people this may be new to, so uh, we're going to walk through that. But that's the goal here. We want to we want to walk away with a clear plan. Uh, we want to generate enough leads to uh, hit your targets and keep your pipeline full. Right at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. We want to know, okay, I've got a steady stream of new patients coming in uh, that need our help and that we can help uh, help them with their hearing. So that's what we're looking for. 
And then we want to have a great return on our investment, right? Any business owner, marketing director, anybody who's in charge of the budget knows, you know, you want to put in a dollar and you want to get 20 out, or you want to put in, you know, $2 and get 40 out. Um, that's always the goal, right? We want to have a 10x, 15x, 20x return on the spend. So that's what we're focusing on. It's okay, what, what kind of plan, what kind of portals and channels online is going to help us do that? Because every market is different and every channel uh, works you know, in different ways in different markets as far as um, the ROI goes. And, and we'll kind of unpack that as well. So what does success look like? Well, success is ultimately maximizing your lead flow and, and hitting your sales goals and your revenue goals for 2023, right? Um, that's, that's what we're, we're after. So that's what we define as success. So we got to set some clear goals, okay? We, well, that's where it begins and uh, that's what we're going to start with. So what are your goals for 2023? So just jot this down on your paper, um, on your notes, or, or if you're doing them on your, on your, uh, your computer and your notes pad, just, just jot down, you know, what are your goals? You know, do you have revenue goals already laid out? Do you have uh, a number of unit goals already laid out? Uh, maybe it's um, opening more locations. You know, what is that going to take? You know, but essentially, kind of high level, what are your goals for 2023? What do you want to accomplish? Um, I love this quote by Brian Tracy. You know, it's success is goals, all else is commentary. Um, that's one of my favorite quotes. So I kind of usually put it in most webinars. So if you've seen one before, you know that this one kind of stays in a lot of our webinars just because it's so true. It, it just speaks volumes to to exactly what we're talking about today. So it's it's very, very fitting. But um, yeah. So now if you're looking at your screen, you're like, okay, why am I looking at a sailboat? Well, this this applies exactly to what we're talking about. So if you don't have any goals, you might as well be on this sailboat right here. There's no wind no no current no breeze nothing you're just kind of floating along hoping things kind of kind of work out in your favor and uh just just hoping for the best really um so clear goals equals wind in your sails right because you know that is exactly where we're heading we're heading toward this amount of revenue or this many units sold per month or this many new locations opened in 2023 right you know exactly what you're going after that's the wind behind your sails that's the reason why you do everything you do um and that's what it ultimately uh you know, comes back around to. So that's essentially what we're after here. We want to get those those goals clearly defined so that it can be the wind in your sails so you can go into 2023 and really, really maximize everything that you're doing. Okay. So I like to share this as well. Um, this is just a really eye-opening uh, study that was done at Harvard. And uh, if you're familiar with this, you'll know, you'll know why I'm sharing it. But uh, in 1979, they, they did a, a study where they did, you know, an interview of all the graduates. And uh, 84% had no specific goals. 13% um, had goals, but they weren't written down. And only 3% had clear written goals and, and the plans to accomplish them. So they actually did all the steps that they needed to do to understand, okay, here's my goals, they're written down, and here's how I'm gonna work backwards to accomplish what I'm, what I'm trying to do. Well, the results were pretty astounding. Uh, the 13% of the class who had goals were earning on average twice as much as the 84% who had no goals at all. So that's a pretty shocking stat to begin with, but even more staggering, those 3% who had the clear written goals were earning on average 10 times as much as the other 97% put, to, put together. So if that doesn't show you right there, you know, how important this, this planning process is and, and just setting aside some time to do this, you know, at the end of every year or going into the new year, then, uh, then I'm not sure what will. So uh, I just always like to share that because it just, it resonates so much with what we're talking about right now. So basically, we just want to use a, a very, very straightforward goal setting framework, right? We just want to have written goals and plans, and we got to set at a minimum one year goals, quarterly goals, and monthly goals, all right? It's very straightforward, but it, you know, you'd be amazed at, at how little this occurs when it comes to, um, you know, people will do this as far as, as, far as the, the, the revenue side of things, but they, they don't do this in, on their marketing side and with how many leads they need to get, they, they need to hit on a monthly and then quarterly basis. And then they wonder why, you know, they're not tracking properly or they're not you know on pace to hit their goals it's because they don't even know how many leads are needed to hit that goal um, so that's what we're gonna we're gonna dive into here um, but we got to have a stopping point uh, at the beginning of, of each new year and the, each quarter and, and and essentially monthly to see you know how do we do based on what we set for our goals and uh, what are we going to do you know going forward are we going to continue down the same path if we're getting what we're going for then yeah we want to stay on the same path and we want to keep the same spend and focus on the same channels but if we're not we've got to pivot We've got to make an adjustment. Otherwise, you know, we, it's like they say, you know, you just keep doing the same thing, get the same results. You know, there's, there's no change, then there's no change. Um, 
So that's what we're going to focus on here. So we've got our goal setting framework. So again, you may have jotted down what your goals are for 2023, but now we're going to get a little bit more specific here. What is your revenue target, right? A lot of people know this one. They know this pretty much right off the top of their hand. If you're doing 1.5 and you say, I want to get to two or 2.5, that's pretty quick, pretty obvious. A lot of, a lot of business owners know that one or, or you know, practice owners, they, they really have that one kind of locked in or mentally, even if they haven't written it down. Uh, but then how much is that monthly? You know, have you done the simple math of just, of just doing that division? And then taking it a step further, how many leads will that require? This is where kind of a lot of, a lot of uh, owners and marketing managers kind of don't really go the next step and say, okay, you know, what's our closing ratio? You know, uh, what's the average transaction value? Are we doing these, these basic uh, math problems to get to how many leads that actually, are, actually requires uh, to, to accomplish our goal? Okay, so take a second, kind of jot that down. And we're going to go through this here. So I've got a quick example, but if our revenue target for, let's call it a single location practice is 1.5 million, uh, how much is that monthly? Well, that obviously works out to $125,000 a month. And let's say we have an average transaction value of $3,000. Okay. So you've, you've got some, some units that you sell for under that, some over that, you know, for the pair. And um, let's say it just works out to about $3,000, just kind of using some round numbers here. So how many sales would that require? Well, 41 per month, right? We're going to divide that monthly target by the average transaction value, pretty straightforward, okay? So we know we need 41 sales per month uh, to, do, to do that uh, that yearly revenue target. So how many leads do we need, all right? So now we've got to look at what's your average conversion rate from the caller slash web form to your booked appointment, all right? So you're gonna divide your call target by your conversion rate. And I'm gonna show you that here. So if you know that your average conversion rate from a caller to a booked call, or excuse me, that should say booked appointment is 55%, uh, then basically we're just going to do that division. And basically to get 41 sales and we're converting at 55%, we need 75 leads per month. That means we need 75 people calling in, trying to book an appointment, filling out a web form, uh, do, doing a chat on our website or a chat on one of the social media platforms. But essentially we need 75 qualified leads per month uh, opting in, telling us, yeah, I want to book an appointment and come in uh, so you can help me with my hearing. So in knowing that, you know, what's your goal for 2023 and uh, how many leads do you need to get there? So let me click back um, just so you can kind of see that again. You know, if you know on this screen right here, you know, what your target is and you divide that by 12 and then you know your average transaction value. And some of you may not have this, you know, right here on the spot, but if you have some rough idea, you can kind of work these numbers while we're going through it. Um, basically, a lot of the times, the one that I know people don't know right off the top of their head is their closing ratio. Uh, props to you if you do, I commend you, but a lot of times that's the one that I, I have a discussion with somebody and they don't actually know what their, their closing uh, ratio is, you know, what their conversion rate is. So take a minute if you haven't already and, uh, and jot that down and, and do that backwards math and find out how many leads do we need to get monthly to get to that revenue goal, okay? While you do that, I'll just grab a quick sip of coffee. All right. And again, feel free, pop it in the chat if you have any questions or if you need to see anything or, or need me to back up, um, obviously feel free to, to pop that in the chat and we'll, we'll address it. So let's keep pressing forward. I wanna be conscious of everyone's time. So, all right, now that we've, we've got our targets, we've set our plan, uh, let's talk about the fundamentals, right? So we've got the three Ms, the message, the market, the media, okay? The what, the who, and the how. All right, so we're gonna kind of unpack this. And, and the reason I'm gonna go through this, I'm gonna go through this in a very particular way, but we see a lot of people get out of order here. And you'll see exactly what I mean here once we go into this. Um, so first we're gonna start with the message, right? We've gotta get clear on what our message is. We need to update our marketing message. Maybe you already have this super dialed in. Maybe you know uh, down to a T exactly what your message is and you've crafted it and honed it over the years and it, it is your bread and butter. And, and if, if that's the case, then, then fantastic. That's, that's music to my ears. But a lot of people don't sit down and they don't map out, you know, who's your ideal patient, right? Um, who is that ideal customer or patient avatar? Um, and do this exercise where you have a four quadrants and you're looking at what are their pains and frustrations, goals and desires, uh, fears and implications, and dreams and aspirations, right? Um, that's what's really going to resonate with people is when you use these different uh, these different components in your marketing message. This is when you, you you've ever seen a marketing where it's just like you feel like something is speaking directly to you. It's like they're inside your head. That's where that's where this comes from, or that's where that comes from. It comes from this. It comes from that that person running that marketing that spoke to you on that level. They sat down and they figured out 
what's that major pain point or what's that fear you have or what's, you know, what's the goal you have or what's a major desire or dream or aspiration. And they use that in their marketing message. So that's what we're going to do. So basically, you know, who's your ideal customer slash patient avatar, right? Demographics, they're a homeowner, 55 plus years old. Obviously we know some that, that age is, is lowering, but uh, typically female, occasionally male, married with two to three kids, head of the household. You know, you can read all the bullet points here. I don't need to go one by one, but um, you know, you got your demographics and then you got your pains and frustrations, right? What are they struggling with? Having trouble with their hearing lately. Uh, they can't get a hearing practice on the phone or re even return their call. You know, they're just trying to get this issue resolved. Maybe they're too busy to deal with it uh, or they're just worried that the situation could get worse, you know, in general. So, right. So those are some pains and frustrations that are pretty common. Um, fears and implications, you know, maybe they have a big fear of, of being overcharged, right? Obviously OTC, you know, is everything right now. That's what everybody's talking about with the big announcement, uh, you know, a month or two back, you know, so everybody's got this whole, you know, OTC thing on their mind, you know, are they, are they, can they get them cheaper, you know, over the counter or are they, are they pay, overpaying if they go to a, a dedicated practice? Um, you know, are they paying too much for something they could have got elsewhere? You know, how, do they have to wait around for the appointment, right? Is this going to take three hours, four hours? Is it going to take an entire afternoon or all of my, in my time? You know, am I going to be inconvenienced with trying to coordinate, you know, a, a good time to come in? Um, you know, is this going to cause more damage, right? I've already got issues um you know or, or you know am i going to end up paying or financing more than i can afford in the long run so ultimately and then it all comes back to leading up to what's their goals and desires you know they, they have their fears they have their pain points but what's the ultimate goal desire for them well they want to get the issue fixed and they want to have it behind them and they want to be able to enjoy that time with their family and uh ultimately you know they've they've done the studies um that we're all probably very familiar with as far as um how you know having hearing loss can impact your, your life in, in terms of not just time with your family and stuff like that, but your job and, and then way on down the road and it can lead to dementia and Alzheimer's, you know, so all of that factors into this. So that's their goal and goals and desires in this, uh, in this overall um, avatar that we're building here. So um, if you can see Joe Jones through Joe Jones eyes, then you can sell what Joe Jones buys, right? Sounds like a tongue twister, but when you really break this down, uh, it's, it's so true. So if you can see your avatar and your ideal customer or slash patient through their eyes, then you can sell what they're going to buy because you understand them. You understand them on a level that they feel like, okay, this is the practice for me. This is the, this is the company that can finally help me. Um, so that's why I love that, that little saying. Uh, it just kind of reiterates what we're going after here. So now we got to craft the message, right? We've got to take what we know about the person with that avatar we built, and we've got to craft a message that's going to resonate with them. Um, so what is your message? You know, why should someone choose to do business with you versus the competition? Okay. What do you have that separates you apart? What's your differentiator? Um, you know, uh, do you offer, you know, um, red carpet service? Uh, you know, do you take things to the next level as far as their experience and really just make it such a painless, seamless experience as a whole that it just separates you from the competition? Are your appointment times and, and everything that you do, is it faster? Do you, do you get people in and out? Um, are you mobile? You know, that's, that's becoming more and more of a thing. So are you more convenient and you'll go to them? Um, so what's the differentiator? And then what benefits do you offer uh, that, that your customer avatar will re resonate with? right um you know all that stuff that we just listed all those bullet points but what benefits do you offer that are going to alleviate those those pains and frustrations and and alleviate those uh fears and implications um down the line so go ahead and list out a few th you know a few of those on each of the lines that you see uh or jot those down in your notes and and we'll come back to that because that's going to be used in in a lot of our marketing so a couple of examples, uh, I already mentioned red carpet treatment, you know, no wait time appointments, you know, as soon as you show up, you know, that's it. Uh, straightforward pricing or upfront pricing, satisfaction guaranteed, um, trustworthy team, years of experience, you know, th these are all fairly common ones. Um, a lot of people get into the technology, um, you know, and, and use that as, as part of it as well. So um, a lot of this, you know, is very, very um, straightforward, it may seem, but it's the little things that make a big difference when it comes to your marketing because everybody's looking for something specific, right? They're all looking for a reason why you basically need to give them a reason not to use you these days. Um, they're, they're looking for something that's, that's wrong. So uh, the more, the more boxes that you can check, 
uh, the better off you're going to be. So what's your message, right? Take a minute, jot that down. You may have made some notes, but what's your message? Um, you know, do you need to modify your current message? You know, if you look at it and you go back and you look at your ads that you're running or you look at your website and you're looking at uh, all the stuff you're doing, you know, kind of take a step back. What is, what's it actually saying? Um, you know, have you done um, uh, like a, what's the word I'm looking for? Not like a case study, but like a, a focus group where you actually have some people who could be potential, uh, you know, patient avatars, look at your stuff, look at your messaging, look at your website and your ads and, and say, hey, how do you, how does this make you feel? What is it, what do you gather from this? Um, you know, tap on friends and family and tell them, tell them to be honest with you. You know, tell them to, to shoot it straight. Uh, you know, hey, if you pull up my website, what, what's the first thing that comes to mind? You know, what do you think of? Uh, what kind of message am I portraying? You know, does, does our practice look, you know, warm and inviting or, or very cold and, and standoffish? You know, what's the, what's the feel that you get from our marketing? Um, and you'd be surprised at some of the answers you get, but you can absolutely do that as a, as a small business or even a big group, um, but it just gets overlooked. People take, take it for granted and, and don't really think to, to have friends, family, other colleagues weigh in and let them know, you know, here's what I would recommend, or here's how this makes me feel. Uh, you'll start to realize kind of what the collective, uh, you know, voice is. All right. So now we can look at media. Okay. So we've, we've talked about message, market, and media, right? This is where, uh, you know, I mentioned a, a few minutes ago that people get ahead of themselves. They jump right to Facebook and say, okay, I want to run some ads because this is what everybody's doing. Well, let's back up. You know, what's the message? Who are we marketing to? Um, you can, you can go to Facebook and throw all the money at, that you want at it or, or, or Google ads or whatever platform you want. But if you're not, you know, if you don't have the message in the market, you know, the targeting dialed in, then, and uh, it's not going to go the way you expect it. I can tell you that. So first and foremost, let's talk about the website. So make sure your hub converts. And when, when I say hub, I mean your website. So your hub is your website, right? This is the core centerpiece around everything you do. And I've had numerous conversations over the years with people who say, well, we don't worry about our website as much because our Facebook has 10,000 likes and we just get a bunch of people through that. And that's fantastic. Uh, but I caution people. Um, when they tell me that, because even though you, it's your Facebook page, it's not really your Facebook page. And what I mean by that is it's Facebook's platform. It's Facebook's platform. They control everything, right? It's their sandbox. We all just have to play in it. And so when they want to make a change, we all have to just roll with it. And this change occurred um, probably six, seven, maybe eight years ago now, where uh, if you had a thousand followers on your Facebook page and you put up, put up a post, well, you could expect that like 65, 70, 75% of your followers or your fans or people who liked your page would see the post. That's, that's how it worked. So people grew these big followings and it was basically free, free marketing essentially. Uh, well, Facebook, you know, being Facebook, uh, they decided to change that up and they limited everybody's page reach down to 10, 15%. So you may be sitting there thinking to yourself, yeah, I, I've noticed this, you know, I put up a post and I only get five likes or 10 likes or whatever it may be. Well, it's because your, your audience just isn't seeing it. It's, it's just being throttled. And it's not anything you're doing wrong. It's just the, the model is they want you to, to rely on ads. They want you to spend money because, well, let's face it, they're a business. They're in the business to make money and they make a lot of it. So um, we can't fault them for that. It's their platform. They, they set the rules and we just have to play by it. But that's where the audience is. So uh, I always caution people when they say, you know, we don't really want to worry about our website as much. We rely on Facebook. Or we rely on this other platform. But your, your website is, is an asset. You, know, you control the asset. Um, so you can make it, you know, look at it any way you want with Facebook and these other platforms. You, know, you, you have to go by the certain, certain layout that they have. You can only put so much information on it. Things have to go a certain way. Your website's free reign. So we want to make sure that the website converts, essentially, right? We can do all this marketing and uh, you know, run all these ads and work on the SEO and get all this traffic to the to the website, but at the end of the day, if the website is not built to convert, then we really haven't accomplished anything. We've basically just sent a lot of people to the website to say, okay, this is, this is great, or uh, well, this isn't what I was looking for, whatever their thought is, and then they leave, right? I mean, at the end of the day, that, that hasn't done what we've wanted to do. So we got to make sure the hub converts. So is your website set up to convert visitors to callers? All right, so I, I really strongly advise you to sit down, look at your website and say, okay, and again, do this exercise where you look at it, you have friends, family, colleagues look at it and say, okay, would you fill out a form on our website? You know, would you take 
take the next step and, and pick up the phone and call us? Or would you, you know, request more information on, on one of our, you know, specific hearing aids or whatever it is that you're wanting to do, whatever the offer is or whatever the call to action is, ask them, would you book an appointment with us, right? Um, and, and take a step back on your own website and look at that and say, okay, how does this come across? You know, am I making it, number one, am I making it easy for them to do what I want them to do? Is the phone number prevalent, right? So I've got an example of, of someone that, you know, this is one of the first ones uh, that we've ever worked with, Lifetime Hearing Services in South Carolina. Um, you know, we've been working with her for, for close to a decade now. So um, basically, this is one that I like to show because, you know, digital marketing has taken her practice to the next level. So it's, it's, it's definitely a strong, strong case study. Um, we actually have that on our website if you want to go ahead and download that for free. But um, it just goes to show you what's possible. Um, so is the phone number prevalent? You know, is it very obvious and very easy to book an appointment? Are you showcasing some social proof with reviews, right? Are you, you know, is it very easy to understand, okay, if I'm here for hearing aids or if I'm here for cochlear implants or, you know, tinnitus or whatever it is, you know, I have multiple locations, all that's very, very obvious when you click on this homepage and you land here. Um, so definitely one to check out, but I've got a good bullet point checklist here. So I recommend either screenshotting this or, uh, you know, come back to the webinar or the replay of the webinar uh, after the fact. But, you know, is it set up for conversion? You know, does it speak to the avatar? Does it address their fears and, you know, frustrations and why they should choose you? Uh, do you have authentic images of your team to the homepage, you know, on the homepage and throughout the website? That's a big one. People want to know who they're going to be dealing with, right? It's very, very easy to, to spot stock images now, right? We, we can all spot them very, very easily. So, use authentic images, take the time, get the headshots done, get the, the pictures of the building done, you know, the video walkthroughs, that type of stuff. Um, you know, and that, that's the next point. Video elements, are you utilizing video? You know, have, have a website welcome video uh, right there front and center to say, hey, thanks so much for coming to our website. Uh, here's, here's how to navigate our website. You know, you can walk them through it. If you're here for yourself or a family member, click this button. If you're here for XYZ, this service, you know, repair, click this button, like walk them through, make it as easy as possible. Um, do videos for each of your services. Uh, this is something that we see get overlooked quite a bit um, because a lot of people just don't want to go on video. And there's, there's ways around that. Um, you know, there's, there's services you can use, but having a video for each of your service will help people, um, you know, especially utilizing, you know, closed captioning on the video, but it'll help people convert better. Uh, video explaining why someone should contact you versus the competition. You know, are you showcasing your online reviews more prominently on the homepage with a tool like BirdEye, ReviewBuzz? You know, there's there's dozens of them now, but those are two examples. Um, does the website make it easy for them to take action and get in contact with your company? You'd be shocked at how many websites we come across that don't have a contact form, a contact us page, or don't have the web uh, phone number anywhere on the website or the address or a map, you know, for directions. Uh, get the basics in order. Let's put a phone number up in the top right or left. Uh, let's make sure there's a web form for them to contact you. And let's add some credibility. You know, if you're if you're part of the the Better Business Bureau, or you know, you're in the local associations, or IHS, AAA, ADA. You know, let's make sure we're we're showcasing those for for those authority uh, status symbols. Um, and then, are there calls to action uh, on each page that speak to the avatar and tell them exactly what to do next? That's big key. Tell people what to do. They don't want to have to think. People don't want to have to try to figure it out. You know, yes, there's a certain percentage of the population that loves puddles and riddles. But not when it comes to trying to book an appointment on your website. They don't want to have to figure it out. Just make it very easy. Make it very obvious. This is what you do to book an appointment. And then here's what to expect once you've booked your appointment. Spell it out for people. All right. Uh, are you giving them an opportunity to engage via chat on your website? Right. A lot of people try to avoid this. But um, you don't have to sit there all day long and monitor the chat. Uh, I know a lot of people think, well, I don't have a person that can just sit there, um, you know, day in and day out. I've got, you know, too much going on. I don't have time to do it myself. I can't just sit there and wait for people to chat on my website. There's, there's ways to avoid having to do it that way, but you can still have chat you know, on your website uh, so that people can, can start that conversation. And then are you leveraging marketing automation? So, you know, and SMS to maximize your lead conversion rates, which we'll get to here in just a sec. But um, that's a nice, you know, clean bullet point checklist for you to go through. At least get your website, you know, on the right path, set up for conversions so that you know, okay, we're giving... We're giving our website the best chance we can so that when someone comes to it, we're going to convert them into hopefully a, a booked appointment. So again, if you haven't already, pull your website up. You know, is it built to convert? Make some notes. What do you need to tweak, right? What, what are the top three things that, that you, um, 
that you need to to address on it and uh and what I, and i highly recommend if if you need to do all of that that we just looked at don't try to tackle it all at once you know put it into segments and say okay these are the first three that we're going to address you know maybe maybe it's uh you know proper calls to action or some videos or um, maybe you're really kind of behind the times and 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 the phone number is not very prevalent you know uh, the contact form is is not working. You know, maybe the plugin or something. We see this quite a bit when websites that haven't been updated in years. You know, they, people don't even realize that their contact form stopped working. You know, a while back. So, uh, just do an audit of your site and and see what needs to be addressed, and then kind of make that action plan of of how you're gonna how you're gonna go at it. Okay, so we'll keep pressing forward here. So be conscious of the time. So okay, um, so. We've talked about the website, we've laid out a plan, you know, but one of the biggest marketing issues facing some hearing practices that we see is just flat out unconverted website visitors, right? That's why we're talking about make sure your website converts, right? So it's one of the biggest issues we see day in and day out. And what the problem is, is, you know, 50 to 60% of inbound traffic, you know, they leave unconverted. And oh, we've seen up to 90% of web forms fail to actually convert and, and, and generate leads, okay, which is a lot. So Obviously, 90%, you know, if you get 100 people to your website in one day, you know, 90% of them might be heading back out without doing anything. And that's not what we want, right? We want to get that, that number down and, and we want more web forms to convert. Obviously, at the end of the day, that's what we're here for. So what's the reason, right? Well, leads that are not followed up with in 15 minutes can go cold, okay? There's plenty of options depending on where you're at. Uh, you, you may be the only game in town, but I'm, I'm going to highly... I'm going to guess that that's highly unlikely. Okay. So, uh, you know, they can easily just as fast as they got to your website, leave, go to the competitor's website and fill out a form and get an appointment scheduled. Uh, the average patient's got to be followed up with five to seven times before booking. All right. It's, it is not as cut and dry as some people think, especially online, but it's, it's kind of you know, blended over into other parts of the, uh, you know, other parts of marketing where, a lot of people think, oh, I got a lead. Okay, they're ready to book an appointment. Well, yes and no. They, they're probably looking at, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in what your ad said or I'm interested in this. Let me give you my name and my email. But that doesn't mean that, that right that second they're ready to come in on Thursday at 2, two o'clock, right? It, it might mean they want to talk to somebody or they might want some more information on something or they have a few questions they want to get answered. Um, and you've got to follow up with them. You know, So calling these leads one time and leaving a voicemail and then just calling it a day is not going to cut it. Um, so it's just not, it's just not the way it works. So um, today's consumer, you know, also prefers to interact via text message versus phone call or email. Um, and we've got the stats and the numbers and the data to prove this. I mean, the conversion rates that we see on the leads that respond via text versus numerous phone calls and numerous emails being sent is night and day. Um, people are, are more likely to respond via SMS. It's just kind of the nature of, of what's, you know, kind of transpired with our, our society as, as it stands today. So what's the solution? Marketing automation. And you may be familiar with this. It's kind of the buzzword for the last couple of years, um, but following up with these forms, these web form fills uh, within the first two minutes of their submission via a phone call, email, text message, right? Immediate response. You know, you can probably think of anything that you've filled out uh, here lately in the past you know, few years, you know, three to five years, however far back you want to go. But you know, as soon as you fill something out, you get something in return. You get an email or you know, some who are really on the ball, you get an, almost an instantaneous phone call. Uh, a good example of that is the car industry. I mean, you fill something out in the car industry, those guys are calling you literally almost as soon as you hit submit, right? So um, it's just the way it works. Uh, because again, there's so much competition and leads are shopping, they're all over the place, you know, they're looking at different options. Now with OTC in the mix, um, it's gonna be even more uh, competitive when it comes to this. So, <clears throat> so we wanna automate that follow-up, right? We, we've gotta automate that so that every prospect is touched at least five or more times. And then we've, we've gotta try to get them engaged in conversation. You know, if they're not answering the phone and getting on the phone with us, we wanna get them, you know, talking back and forth with text or at least emailing back and forth. But text is obviously way more instantaneous uh, and more, more accessible uh, for a lot of people. So uh, we want to get them engaging back and forth. So that's the solution to what we're talking about here. Um, so 
it really just boils down to simple math. But let's say on the left here, you get 50 leads, right? We'll just say you got 50 leads this month and the conversion rate's 30%, but you have zero follow-up, right? It's just, they book, a, you know, they send the lead in, you call them. If they answer, hey, what time do you want to book your appointment? It's very basic. Okay, great. That's available. We'll look forward to seeing you, you know, Monday the 3rd at 2 p.m. Okay. No follow-up uh, other than that, right? You just call them once and that's it. So let's say you get 15% uh, or excuse me, 15 appointments book, right? You got 30%. Uh, ratio. So 50 times the 30, 30% is 15 appointments. Uh, and we'll use that average sale of $3,000. So that 15 appointments, that, that got you $45,000, right? Now let's say we put in some automation over here on the right, same number of leads, but let's up that conversion rate, right? Let's get it up to where we're doing proper follow-up, we're leveraging automation, and, and we're really working these leads like they're supposed to. Uh, now you've got 35 appointments booked, we're going to keep the exact same average sale value, but you've basically just went 45,000 up to 105,000 just from the same amount of leads, same amount of transaction value, but just simply zeroing in, dialing in your follow-up process and leveraging some automation. You've taken things to the next level. That's how, how simple this is. <clears throat> Excuse me. So it makes every lead you generate more valuable at the end of the day. That's really what it comes down to. So let's implement this in your business. So I'm going to show you our platform. There are others that do this. I'm not here to sell you our platform or make, you know, have you subscribe. There is a free demo. Feel free to check it out. But again, I'm not pitching this to you. I just want to give you an idea of what's out there. So we have a platform called Hearing Lead Pro. There's other platforms that do this. There's even some um, um, you know, practice management systems that have some automation starting to occur that we're, we're coming across as well, which is fantastic. At the end of the day, I just want you to start using automation. I just want you to start leveraging it. Right, whether or not you're using our platform or another platform or your your existing uh, management uh, software to do it is irrelevant. I just want to make sure you're looking at it and implementing it. Okay, so um, Hearing Lead Pro, you can check it out if you want, but just either start with what you're already paying for. Um, so if you're using you know Cycle Counselor, whatever it is, um, take a look, see what they have available on the plan you're on. If you can leverage some of it, great. If you can't, you know, take a look at ours or there's some other ones out there. Infusionsoft's a big one uh, that a lot of people may be familiar with as well. So again, lots of options here, but start leveraging automation, okay? All right, so what are your action items, you know, as far as the conversion elements that you'll implement on your website, you know, go. So we, we had that check with that big bullet point checklist. We said, here's a bunch of stuff, you know, to focus on right away. Um, you know, obviously get some friends, family, colleagues to look at it, see what they say and kind of take that into consideration. But it's going to become pretty obvious what you should focus on pretty quickly when you do that, that exercise. And then maybe your website's completely dialed in, but maybe you have zero happening on the back end, right? Maybe you have zero automation taking place and, and uh, you know, these touch points are very few and far between. Maybe that needs to be your main focus, but jot down what your three conversion elements are uh, that you're going to implement and, uh, and make note of that. And again, feel free to pop, pop in the, uh, the chat if you have questions about anything or if you want me to circle back, so. Okay, we're doing good on time here. All right, so let's keep pressing forward. Okay, takeaways, you know, what'd you learn? What'd you notice? Anything you'd like to share? Again, if you have any questions, feel free to pop it in the chat. All right, the next thing I wanna talk about is your KPIs, okay? So, so far we've laid out this plan and we've looked at the website, things to implement. Uh, we've talked about some automation, right? Um, knowing and tracking your KPIs is, is one of, in my opinion, the most overlooked uh, components of a lot of hearing practices, you know, marketing, you know, when it comes down to everything and they're looking at the big picture. Um, everybody can look at these, these numbers as far as, you know, setting up a dashboard and saying, well, how many impressions did this ad get? Uh, okay, how many clicks did it get? And these, these marketing numbers are fine, but what it really boils down to is, creating a, a dashboard that's gonna show you what you actually truly care about. Uh, we call it the executive summary. And what I mean by that is really boiling it down to how much did I spend between my ads? And if I have a company, you know, similar to my, like Audiology Ignite or a different marketing agency helping me do this, how much did I spend with them and on my ads? We put the two together because that's, that's a cost that all kind of goes into it. Uh, how many leads did I get? You know, web forms, um, phone calls, you know, breaking those phone calls down to what channels they came from, you know, Google, the website, et cetera. Um, so how many leads did I get? What's the cost per lead, right? That's a big one. 
And then, you know, uh, what's the cost per opportunity, you know, so actually taking it a step further, you know, getting, or excuse me, let me back up, cost per lead, cost per appointment, two different things, um, and then cost per actual opportunity, right? So you, you conducted a test and, and have an opportunity to, to fit them uh, with a hearing aid, what's the cost there? You know, a lot of people don't, don't boil it down that far. So knowing and tracking your KPIs, and then ultimately at the end of the day, ROI, right? How much did you put in? How much did you get out? Um, but knowing those core numbers right there, that's what's going to make the difference. That's what's going to really make the difference to you taking, you know, your business and your practice to the next level, because now your, your marketing meetings are not, hey, we ran this campaign and, you know, it got 10,000, you know, impressions and, and 150 clicks and we got, you know, a you know, handful of leads out of it, 25 leads out of it or whatever the number is, right? We're taking it a step farther. We're, we're actually not as focused on that as we are, okay, how many leads are we getting based on what we're spending? Okay, can we take that number to the next level? From there, okay, how many appointments are coming out of that, right? Because that's really what matters. And then out of those appointments, how many actually become an opportunity to, to be fit? And so, you know, it's really about boiling down to those core numbers as the owner, as the, the, the marketing director that you really care about at the end of the day. Um, so having a dashboard that, that really portrays all that, showcases that is, is crucial. So setting something up like that is, is very doable with a bunch of different softwares. Again, here's a quick screenshot of ours uh, to help facilitate that, but um, there's multiple ones out there. You could even do it with a simple spreadsheet in Google Docs. I've seen that done before. Um, with Google Docs, as well as uh, um, Google Studio. Studio, yeah, Dashboard Studio, it's got a name, but if you go type in Google Studio, it'll come up, but you can create these, these really cool reports out of that. Um, so again, here's kind of an example, total leads, total spend, cost per lead, you know, expected ROI. We like to switch that out. You know, it used to be expected ROI to true ROI, where we actually go back and, and match the leads to the campaign. Um, you know, with what we call sales data matching, but uh, lead breakdown, you know, organic calls, PPC calls, GMB calls, how many web forms and chats, you know, just kind of very big picture, but key KPI components that you need to be measuring to know, okay, we're growing or we're stalled out or we're not growing. We've got to make some changes. You know, these, these campaigns are converting. These aren't, let's put more money here. That's how you make those core decisions. Otherwise it's, it's a complete guessing game. So. That's the stuff that needs to be tracked. That's the importance of this and, and really taking a step back on a monthly basis and looking at this every 30 days to say, hey, where do we need to adjust? Where do we need to pivot? Or are we right on track or are we exceeding what we're going for? And let's just, you know, put the throttle down and keep going. All right. So, so far we set our clear goals and targets for 2023, right? We did the exercise. We reverse engineered it. We said this is how much we want to make in revenue. Um, and you know, here's what it's going to take based on our average transaction value, how many leads we need, what our conversion rate is. So this is how many leads we're going to need to get to that. Uh, we got clarity around our market, our message and our media. So we know who we're talking to. We built the avatar. Uh, we, we honed in on our message and then we dialed in the media on, on what platforms we want to focus on. Uh, we looked at making sure our website is optimized for conversion um, as far as, you know, getting those key components there so that when somebody lands on the website, they're not confused, they know exactly what they need to do, how to book an appointment, how to take the next step uh, and do what we're wanting them to do. And then finally, we, we took a look at some simple KPI tracking dashboards. Again, these can be a lot more elaborate, a lot more complex with different uh, marketing components, but we actually just kind of a, a pro tip here, if you will, um, we actually set up multiple dashboards. We do two dashboards. We do the executive KPI summary one that I highlighted where it's like, you know, all those, those, those executive numbers, if you want to call them that, of, you know, amount spent, leads, cost per lead, cost per appointment, cost per op, um, and then ultimately the, the ROI at the end of the day. And then we have the marketing, what we call the marketing dashboard. And that shows you all the SEO, the rank tracking, the, the, the review, man, you know, monitoring and reputation management, and then the, uh, the um, ads and the impressions and the clicks and just the numbers that some people just don't even want to, it's just overwhelming. So we try to separate those. Um, because we know that each has their place, right? So highly, highly, highly recommend you take a look at setting things up that way. It'll make your life a lot easier. All right, so key trends for 2023. Okay, so first and foremost, what I, I've been recommending this actually through the majority of 2022, but it's going to carry right into 2023 
um, is combining traditional and digital marketing efforts. And what does that mean? So most likely you're doing direct mail. You're probably, if not doing them now, you've done them in the past. You're looking at things like TV, print, print you know, magazines and local uh, newspapers and radio and uh, billboards and stuff like that. And then you have your digital. And I've had numerous conversations where people are like, we're going to shut all that off and we're going all digital. And I stop them in their tracks and I say, don't do that. You need to have a healthy mix of both, but you need to combine them, right? Digital is just merely an amplification of a lot of the tradi traditional stuff, if you think about it. And, and what that means is, for instance, with direct mail, if you simply just go in and put some QR codes on your direct mail pieces now and try to get people over to a dedicated landing page, this is the most basic way of doing it, but get a QR code on there, get them over to a landing page, you've now opened up an entire, entirely new realm of possibilities as far as retargeting that person and getting ads to follow them around the internet based on the fact that they went to your landing page um, and really staying omnipresent and staying in front of them all because you sent them a direct mail piece, right? That's where it started, but we need to combine those efforts. We got to make sure that we give ourselves the best chance possible um, when, we're, when we're spending that kind of money, especially on something like direct mail or billboards, which are, you know, five, 10, 15, you know, $20,000 for these, these monthly efforts um, and more, you know, we want to make sure that we're maximizing every dollar spent. And the best way to do that is to get them over to a landing page or get them into the online side of things because retargeting and email marketing, you know, if you can get them to opt in for something or getting their cell phone number, that just takes it to the next level because now you can reach them on so many different more, uh, so many different more touch points and, and fronts uh, in their, in their world. Um, so combining traditional and digital marketing efforts, definitely a key trend. I would highly look, highly recommend you look at how can you implement uh digital into your traditional stuff, right? Uh, putting call tracking numbers, specific numbers on billboards um, so that if they're going to call while they're sitting in traffic, you know, and, and if you're running those or putting specific call tracking numbers on uh, radio commercials and specific URLs that they can go to, they're very, very simple um, so that they can remember it and actually go to it, but only using that URL in that, that medium. So only give the radio station that URL. Don't put it anywhere else. Don't make it accessible to any, on any part of your website that, that you have to have that URL. And then you can actually measure, you know, how well that's actually working. Um, because we all know it's, it's, it's all fine and dandy that, that, that the TV station or the radio station tells you, Hey, we, we, you know, you got 120,000 impressions last month. Yeah, that's great. But how many leads did you get? How many appointments did you get? How many actually turned into to viable, you know, opportunities to, to fit a hearing aid, right? Um, if you can't answer those, then, then I think you're kind of missing the ball. Um, bullet point number two, shifting the phone converse, conversion to message conversion. Okay, so leveraging that SMS uh, is going to be big. Platforms like ours, Hearing Lead Pro and Fusionsoft, you know, using those type of platforms to communicate pe with people uh, through through their um, their their phone with SMS is is really what I what I would focus on. And then you got to have an all-in perspective. Um, you can't just say, we're going to only focus on SEO. SEO is a long-term game. You need to supplement it with pay-per-click, right? If you're it, it, I, a healthy mix of both, along with social media, along with geofencing, along with, you know, uh, direct mail, you know, is really what's going to, at the end of the day, win, win in the long run, because you're going to have multiple touch points and you're going to be omnipresent, you know, to your, to your ideal avatar and in front of them uh, more times than you even even realize. Um, and that's what's ultimately going to get the conversion because they see you over and over again and things start to become familiar. So that's uh, that's what I would recommend you focus on for 2023 um, when it comes to the key trends. So building your plan. And how are we doing on time here? Okay. Uh, so your plan for 2023, right? So this is a, a graphic we have on our website, but basically uh, it just kind of really highlights nicely all the different areas that you need to be focused on. And I know to some people, it's like, wow, this is a lot of stuff. Um, but you have your website, your SEO, your reputation, your social media, your email marketing, pay-per-click. So all your ads, uh, retargeting and, and proximity marketing, uh, repeat, <coughs> excuse me, repeat referral stuff. Uh, and then your content, right? That's really kind of what it boils down to. Um, are these, these eight, I think nine, um, nine different, uh, areas of focus. Okay. So laying out that plan, um, you know, going forward. And I, I highly recommend if you have, if you downloaded the workbook, you already got this, but if you haven't, I told you to have some stuff at the end for you. So um, go download this free checklist. This lays everything out for you. 
uh, makes it real nice and easy to um, to uh, go about kind of attacking this this circle of stuff. So, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I got some in my throat. <clears throat> um, so head over to go.audiologyignite.com slash checklist and download that. Highly recommend you do that right now. Okay. All right. Um, so action items, as we start to wrap up here, what are your top three internet marketing initiatives that you need to implement to hit your 2023 goal, right? Do you need to get clear on your plan? Uh, do you need to get your website converting? Do you need to leverage automation? Um, maybe you're doing all of that, but your, your tracking's not great. Maybe you need to get your KPI tracking dialed in. Um, sorry about that. Didn't mean to click ahead. Um, you know, what's the top three? I find that if you, you make this big list of, of 25 things, you know, you, you're going to end up doing nothing because it's going to be so overwhelming. Let's boil it down to three and uh, let's set those as our top three. And then once those are complete, we can move to the next three and then to the next three and just keep repeating that. And uh, before you know it, you'll have accomplished way more than you ever thought. So what are your top three? So takeaways, what'd you learn? What'd you notice? Anything you'd like to share? Uh, feel free to pop it in the chat. You know, we've covered setting goals, how many leads we're going to need. Uh, we looked at the three fundamentals of marketing success, how to optimize our website, uh, what the big picture is as far as, Mac, you know, the marketing channels that you should be tapping into, uh, the latest trends for, for the upcoming year. And then uh, hopefully we got you centered around, okay, what's, what's the action plan? What do I need to focus on um, for, the, for the new year that's really going to help me take it to the next level? So, um, oh, I jumped ahead. I apologize. So um, here's another, we've got checklists, you know, out the wazoo. So we've got checklists, books, all kinds of resources for you. So head over to our website, audiologyignite.com slash reward as well to get access to this one. Um, a lot of them, they kind of cross over, but there's, there's only so much you can fit onto these checklists and there's so much that goes into marketing. I uh, highly recommend you just, you grab both of them. Um, so definitely check that out. Um, so I appreciate you being here live with us. And if, or if you're checking out the replay and stick until the end, um, obviously this can be overwhelming. If this is something you have questions on, uh, feel free to, uh, to jump on my calendar for, for a complimentary strategy session. It's no obligation. There's no charge. Um, and I'll jump on with you myself and, uh, help you put together a plan. Um, and we'll, we'll go through everything that we talked about here today. Um, I'll take a look at, uh, exactly what you have going on, see if there's any gaps, any room for improvement. And then if it makes sense, and if you're looking for help, you know, implementing it and executing on it, uh, we can have that discussion too. And, and I can share with you what that would look like as well. So again, just head over to our website. Uh, there's actually a button at the top, you know, schedule an appointment, I believe is what it says. Um, but pick a time on the calendar, schedule that strategy session. And uh, I hope you take advantage of that. Because again, it's just, it's free, no obligation. Um, we'll take a look at your your current stuff where it stands today. So um, any questions? Um, I, I appreciate, you know, the, the folks that are still with us here hanging on to the end. Um, I hope you got a lot out of this. Like I said, we try to do these every month um, so that, you know, we can help you guys really take things to the next level with your practices because there is a lot to, to navigate when it comes to online marketing. Um, we do this day in and day out and there's stuff that comes out, it feels like every every other day. Um, just just the other day, it was announced that Google is rolling out a new algorithm update. You know, it's another one this year. So that's something that we're currently navigating through. So it's stuff like that that, you know, can be a lot for for people to keep up with. When when you're busy focused on running your practice and seeing patients, you you don't have time to be reading, oh, Google's coming out with another algorithm update. How do I adjust? You know, what do I need to do? Right. So uh, so that's what we're here for. But uh, if you have any questions, I've got some a few minutes here to hang out if anybody has anything they want me to circle back on or clarify. But um, again, I appreciate you guys staying until the end. So um, I'm not seeing anything popping into the chat. So um, all right. Well, again, head over to the website, grab yourself a strategy session, a time on the calendar. And uh, I appreciate you guys being here. And uh, if you're checking out the replay, again, thank you for for the for the watch and uh we'll be putting these out every month so uh, we'll look forward to seeing you on the next one uh that we do next month so i hope everybody has a great day and uh, we'll talk soon
If you are looking for more information on how to attract more customers to your practice, go to audiologyignite.com and schedule your free practice acceleration session with marketing expert and founder Shane Gebhardt. You can also join our free hearing marketing mastermind Facebook group to learn from other practice owners. If you enjoyed the podcast, be sure to subscribe and leave us a five-star review.